but they don't go and put it back on the glass aisle. I always go back and look at the scraps that are left behind, and this was left behind. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there for the fond recollections that lie there. Well, good, good Sunday afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the dining room of the 1925 bungalow. I'm Scott. Today, I'm selling nothing. It's a show and tell. Now, before I show and tell, I've got to thank the old timers. Now, I've talked about this before, but you know, the old timers, they taught me a lot. One of the things they taught me is you make your money when you spend your money, and they also taught me you buy it when you see it. That's right. There are many uh, dry days. In fact, there are some pretty tough weeks when you're out there sourcing and you just can't find anything. Well, on the days when it seems like it's falling from the sky, spend your money. Don't be afraid to come home with a wallet full of money on the days when all you're finding is poo-poo. But when you see the good stuff, get it. That's the advice that was given to me years ago, and I know you didn't ask for any advice. Advice is the cheapest commodity, right? But I just gave you some. Buy it when you see it. We're back out here in the dining room. You know, the live sales are going to be down in the 1930s living room in the basement, but, the, uh, but some of the show and tells will still be out here in front of the china closet, which is still adorning its beautiful black and amber glass. We're not going to do Christmas until um, after Thanksgiving, at least not here. Let's just start with this right here. <gasps> when I walked in and I saw it, this was at a thrift shop and I paid less than $5 for it. What is it? It's a piece of American Brilliant Cut Glass and it is signed P and B. That's right. That's the <coughs> Pitkin and Brooks Glass Company. And this is going to go back to the 1890s. It is absolutely beautiful. It's hard for you to see it. It's signed in the center here. There's a diamond with a P and a B. I'm certain that that's not showing up, but look at how beautiful and brilliant that piece of glass is. American Brilliant Cut. It's not pressed. It's cut and it sparkles like a diamond. We love single vases, do we not? Are we not over the moon when we find a pair? Ooh. How have these been together for pretty near 100 years? That would take them back to 1923. They're probably even older than that. Unsigned because press glass wasn't signed usually. Um, sometimes you'll see new cut, near cut. Uh, occasionally you'll see a signature, but but not normally with the with the pressed. Look at these this pair of vases or vases. You know what I did the other night just for the fun of it. I stuck one of those little battery operated tea light candles down in there, and then I stuck another one down in this and put them on the mantelpiece, and it was amazing. I don't know if I want to sell these because they used to be really pretty to decorate with at Christmas time. And clear glass is so versatile because you can use it year round. I couldn't believe uh, they are nine inches tall. They have no damage at all. These are pressed, not cut. So a little less expensive, but well made. Uh, nice glass, very nice glass. Uh, here's the funny thing. Uh, when you get to the bed, this is funny. At this one particular thrift store, um, the folks that are in there uh, buying and researching and whatnot, <sighs> some of them do their researching in the middle of the aisle. Some of them will go to the back of the store and they'll sit on chairs and they'll start researching glass. And if they can't figure out what it is or if they just decide they don't want it, they just set it down and they set it down in an area of a store where they have things like used medical supplies and uh, diapers and baby clothes and I don't know what else, but they don't go and put it back on the glass aisle. 
I always go back and look at the scraps that are left behind, and this was left behind. I thought, well, it's gotta be chipped or something's gotta be wrong with it. It has no, no problems. A car, a uh, iridescent marigold swung vase. Yep. So, you know, Fenton, Northwood, somebody. Little tiny hand on hand on a nest. Get on there, or chicken on a nest, and then big hen on a nest. We'll save these until next autumn season. Put these away until then. Now watch these chickens. They are reproducing them in China. And they do say made in China on the bottom. This is not marked, but it's not it, uh, it's it's not a new one made in China. Those, the quality of the glass. Do you remember this? Wait, I don't even think I put this out in the video yet. Yes, I think I did. Well, I've already cleaned it. If you remember, the carrier there, the little caddy, was all corroded and whatnot. But you can see I've cleaned it and <clears throat> polished it. The glass is unmarked, but I bet it's Cambridge. See, it's a little divided and it's got an etch on it. And it sits right down in there. This is dates to the mid 20s into the early 30s. All right, let's do a little more uh, autumn colored glass. Found this beautiful uh, serving bowl. It's a small bowl for jelly, mayonnaise, salad dressing, whatever you'd like, even for candy. And that's late 20s, early 30s. These I think are, uh, I met Jeanette. I think Jeanette did it. Again, a pair. I think Jeanette did, did these, maybe in the 40s or 50s. The amber glass and things, I do plan on saving until uh, next autumn season. This will have for sale this beautiful cut to clear piece of glass in ruby red, probably made in uh, Czechoslovakia. And it would also be really pretty with the, uh, a tea light candle down inside, a battery operated one probably. It would light up and flicker and you'd see the clear glass. Only one boy, I wish there were two of those. All right, there's an Art Deco chrome. <laughs> see what I mean about, oh, and all of this, listen, this was all within, I don't know, just going out a couple of days. This is a Pyrex made for Westinghouse. So for the Westinghouse electric mixers, I really liked the modern deco inspired stepped or tiered sides on this Pyrex mixing bowl from, you know, the forties. You know how much I love a cheese and cracker set. You know how much I love a cheese and cracker set. Remember the frosted set? I'm still holding on to that. That might wind up on eBay. But I found another cheese and cracker set. And every once in a while, you'll find one where the cheese compote is actually part of the mold and it is connected yeah, to the glass. I actually wish that they made more of them that way. I think they wouldn't have gotten lost and separated. Beautiful glass, silver overlay, sterling marked. Of course, it always says that. The company that did the, did the decoration. And here's for your cheese and then your crackers under there. Pretty glass. I've already cleaned. I've already polished the silver. You decide what kind of flower it is. So I had a little bit of time to kill and I went to Jinxed. Uh, South Philly on Washington Avenue. There's more than one location in Philadelphia and I've been to all of them. And I'm fiddling around looking inside of a display cabinet and look what I found. <laughs> That's not the noise I made. I made a different noise. It had no price tag on it. 
And I said, hey boss, come on over here and tell me what you want for this cream and sugar. And he goes, oh, how about something like, I don't know, $16. <gasps> 16 doll hairs? I couldn't get out of there fast enough. It's Decagon, Cambridge. Uh, glass, it is marked with the C for Cambridge. And Decagon was around for a while, but that Art Deco lightning bolt handle, they didn't do that for too long. I don't know how many years they did it, but this has to be the early 30s and there are no chips on it. It's the, it's the beautiful blue, I forget what they called it. Moonlight blue, midnight blue. I'm still using that awful dish towel that's got fuzz all over it. <laughs> eh, I'll get rid of it. So here we have the cream and the sugar in that wonderful Cambridge blue, which, might, which looks even better. In, so the ring light is washing it out. You can't really see how blue that is, but it's absolutely beautiful. And those Art Deco handles. Now, I want a set of cups and saucers to go with it. That's what I want. Oh, let's see if that ever happens. I don't know, but I couldn't believe it. What time is it? 11 o'clock. I mean, we've gone 11 minutes. I'm gonna keep this, I'm a, I'm a, probably from the 20s or 30s. The, uh, Tobacco, tobacco, what am I trying to say, tin? Not bad, not bad at all. You know, for an old tin, a few scratches, two bucks, you bet. Made by Northwood. At first I said, oh, I know that, that's the Delaware pattern. And then I got to looking at it and I said, no, that's not the Delaware pattern. Um, I don't know what they called it, daisy flower but it's a pretty Northwood bowl in green and it's got gold uh, decorations on it. That'll be pretty at Christmas time. Maybe, maybe not. Put your candle in that, set it in the center. Listen, there's no rules. We don't follow rules, we break the rules. This is, this is thrift shops, folks, in my, here. You know, it was funny because I was at a, I was at a uh, traffic light in one of the little towns where I go thrifting, and I happened to look over and and we have things here called like burrows. I guess you have burrows where you are as well. And the little antique store that I was going to happens to be in a burrow, and on the sign it said founded 1692. And I sat there in my car and I said, no wonder I can find so much good stuff, because. You know, we've been in this part of the, we, well, yeah, I've been in this part of the country for a long time. And when you go shopping in a town founded in 1692 or 82, you're gonna find some stuff. Wait till I get to the baby dolls. I'm only gonna show you one today because you know, I know almost nothing about a baby doll. Um, I didn't have any sisters and my father was an only child. I had two cousins. I remember once pulling the head off of one of my cousin's dolls and sticking it in the um, Easy Bake Oven when we used to play out on the back porch. Ice bucket from the 30s or 40s. That's not anything. Oh, there's more, there's more, there's more. There's that ruby red. Uh, it might look black there, but it's red. And that's Hawking's, green, uh, Hawking's glass. We're gonna have that for sale soon when I get my Christmas things together. There's a 1930s, 40s teapot, or, uh, unmarked, that one, with pretty flowers on it. Are they poppies? And it's got that sort of yellowish, umber tone, kind of a glaze. Uh, that could have been by one or two or three or four companies. Now, you know I love me a mayonnaise set. I ain't so big on mayonnaise, but when you put it in something like this, you have to call it mayonnaise. Now, standard, standard gift items in the 20s and 30s were cheese and cracker sets and what were, what were called mayonnaise sets. Now remember, mayonnaise or salad dressing, um, 
when the ladies come to lunch or you're having a nice dinner, you would not stick a jar of Hellman's out on the table with a knife sticking out of it. No, no. You'd put your salad dressing or your mayonnaise, which was homemade by a lot of people, although by the 30s you could buy store-bought uh, mayonnaise and other salad dressings. And these are the spoons that were used. That's the original old pink and that goes with it. And so there's the mayonnaise etched. And the, if, if one is etched or cut, it should match the base. And these are unmarked. Is this Decagon as well by Cambridge? Cambridge did did so much with, uh, with Decagon. So a mayonnaise set. This might be Libby glass. I haven't done a great deal of digging around yet, but I think you saw it when I bought it. I'm still over the moon about this. I think it dates to the 1940s and boy, is it good quality. I'm going to go ahead and stick with punch bowl. Uh, interesting that it has a lid and it almost is in the shape of a pumpkin and almost the size of a pumpkin. It's beautifully etched on the top. Oh, this is the original wonderful glass ladle. It has some etching on it as well back here. And just look at that. I need to, I need to do a little more cleaning on it. But I think this was in one of my videos and we were talking about perfect for, um, for eggnog or having a small, a small luncheon, you know, this is great for maybe four to eight people. Uh, spiced cider in there. I guess you could serve mulled wine. I guess there's all kinds of stuff you could do with it, but um, I, I had to, had to purchase that when I found it at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Now, we are going to give you a sneak peek. The next few things I'm going to show you will be sold, not uh, will not be sold until next year when I do my first springtime extravaganza show, you know, where I pull out things to say goodbye to Old Man Winter, which we're just getting ready to say hello to. And then we say hello to springtime. And when we do that, we want beautiful colors that remind us of the springtime. And I've got them right here. Take a look at this. This is all gonna be springtime. I don't know why I just had to stick a rooster in there for the springtime. I guess, don't they get very active then? That's not marked on the bottom, but I'm almost 100% certain that's an unmarked piece of McCoy. That just is so McCoy looking right there. Pretty yellow pottery vase which will be for next springtime. And look at this piece of Lane and, Lane and somebody. Oh, Van, no, Van Noos, California. Lane and who? Well, I guess I could have tried to figure it out. Well, anyway, it's copyright 1959. Isn't that so? 1959. Can you see this planner on the back of somebody's television set? Do you know, when I picked this up, I said, it's broken. Something has been repaired on it. It's impossible. Do you know I went over this and over it and over it? Not only was nothing broken and then repaired, nothing has been chipped on it. How has that survived since 1959? with no damage. Next spring, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I haven't even done my Christmas sale yet. Let's take a look at that and this and this, and this is just for me. I don't know who made it. It's a cool little Art Deco serving thing, little tray, you know, nuts, cheese. I don't know what you put on it, but put something on it. And then let's look at, I walked into the Goodwill off of Woodhaven Road in North Philadelphia. And I found this. With the flower frog still sitting in it, 
The frog, I believe, was $1.99. The bowl, I think, was $3.99. Oh my goodness. Black glass. Beautiful, uh, hand-painted uh, flowers on the inside. And then this really shows you how the frogs were used. And you see a bowl like this. And um, I have a feeling that this was donated to the store like this. And they had the they had the two pieces priced separately, but they had the frog inside of the bowl, you know, to suggest that that's the way you're supposed to buy it. So I was very happy to get a hold of that. Some pottery that I think gets overlooked a little bit. I think it's more famous cousins are a little more familiar. But I like Abingdon pottery. Now I know a lot of it doesn't have much decoration to it, but there were some really beautiful colors, nice glazes, and this is a piece of Abingdon pottery that would have been made between 1940 to 47. It's in the 500 line, the 500 series. Um, it's actually number 552, easily marked, clearly marked there. The 500 series came out in 1940 and it was sort of strung out because of interruptions during the Second World War. Um, they took a few years, few years off and then continued making pots with the 500 stamp on the bottom. So 1940 to 1947, you name the color. Because if I say mint, I might change my mind and say celadon, and then I might change my mind and say sage or jadeite. I'm gonna think I, I think I'm gonna go with kind of like a sage. Anyway, it's really pretty. I love it. It's got no damage on it. It was um, twenty dollars in an antique store. It was half price. Was I not gonna buy that for ten dollars? Get out of town. I was out of town, and I'm back in town with my Abington vase. I want to say thank you to Joe Paredes, because Joe wrote Abingdon Pottery Artware, 1934 to 1950, stepchild of the Great Depression, and this was very helpful for me to do a lot of reading about Abingdon Pottery. Take another look at their pottery. Been around for a long time quite a big output, but some of the work that they did in the Art Deco style in the 30s will really excite you if you happen to like early 1930s design. Well, now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear this table, reload it. Probably won't change my shirt, but I'm probably going to come back and do another video. But before I do, I've got one baby doll to show you. There she is. Hello, hello. And she is looking very 1930s to me with her little hairdo. I can't find any marks on her. And she's, I don't know what she is. I don't know if she's composition or if she's, I'm trying to, Well, her little, she doesn't have any marks at all. All right, let's pull your bloomers up or whatever they are. But she's got her whole her whole cost cost costume on. There's her dress and whatever that thing is, and whatever that th thing is. She's fully clothed. There's her hat, and she's looking very 1930s, is she not? And I can tell you right now, she's not. What is she made out of? No. She's not plastic. She's not wooden. She doesn't feel like she's not cracking. So I don't, I don't know what that is. But anyway, hello. She's a tiny little thing. Probably came from Woolworths for like, I don't know, 10 cents. I've got some other dolls to show you, but we won't do that until we come back in our next video. Well, thank you. What did you like? What was your favorite item? 
Oh, wait a minute. No, see now I've already said goodbye and there's two things sitting right here I forgot to show you, so we'll have to do those in the next video because I try to keep these less than uh, 30 minutes long. Um, gonna clear the table off and start all over again. I'll be back tomorrow with a video, but then again Monday night with a, another live sale. That's the Monday night before Thanksgiving, so I hope you'll be able to join me then. Talk to me in the comments below. What did you think? What would you put in this beautiful punch bowl? Do you think you can find me? I'll pay you. Can you find me some cups and saucers in this Decagon with that lightning bolt handle? I don't want a whole place setting, but man, I would love to have some cups and saucers to go with that. What did you think? I think my favorite might be this black glass bowl with the frog in it. I just really like that a lot. Oh, and the cut glass. Oh, and this. Okay, it's time to go. Thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. See you tomorrow. So long for now.